thank you for joining us for today's TechSoup for Libraries webinar, Instagram for Public Libraries, Good Practices for Social Media. My name is Crystal, and I'll be your host. We have two guests today who will talk about what their libraries have done to create engaging Instagram accounts to connect with their communities. They'll share some good practices that have worked well for them. But before we begin, I have just a few announcements to share. We will be using the ReadyTalk platform for our meeting today, so please use the chat in the lower left corner to send questions and comments to the presenters. We will be tracking your questions throughout the webinar, and we'll answer them at the designated Q&A section at the end. All of your chat comments will only come to the presenters, but if you have comments or ideas to share, we will forward them back out to the entire group. You don't need to raise your hand to ask a question. Simply type it into the chat box. Should you get disconnected during the webinar, you can reconnect using the same link in your confirmation email. You should be hearing the conference audio through your computer speakers, but if your audio connection is unclear, you can dial the phone number in your confirmation email, which we've also shared in the chat. If you're having technical issues, please send us a chat message and we'll try our best to assist you. This webinar is being recorded and will be archived on the TechSoup website. If you're called away from the webinar, or if you have connection issues, you can watch a full recording of this webinar later. You'll receive an archive email within 24 hours uh, that will include a link to the recording, the PowerPoint slides, and any additional links or resources shared during the session. If you're tweeting this webinar, please use the hashtag TS4LIBS. We have someone from TechSoup live tweeting this event, so please join us in the conversation there. TechSoup Global is dedicated to serving the world's nonprofit organizations and libraries. TechSoup was founded in 1987 with a global network of partners. We connect libraries and nonprofits to technology, resources, and support so that you can operate at your full potential, more effectively deliver programs and services, and better achieve your mission. Right now, TechSoup is in the middle of their 2016 Storymakers program. You can submit your digital story for a chance to win some great prizes for your library. You have until May 31st to submit your entry, and TechSoup has created training resources and webinars to, to help you create an amazing digital story. Learn more at TechSoup.org slash Storymakers. All right, with that, I think we're ready to begin. So thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Instagram for Public Libraries, Good Practices for Social Media. If you're joining us from a nonprofit or another type of organization or library, we hope you also get some great tips that you're able to apply in your organization. We have two guests joining us today. Ray Delara joins us from Burlingame, California, where he has worked at the Burlingame Public Library for the past 17 years. He's currently the Library Aid Supervisor and also serves on the web team and manages the library's Instagram account. Amanda Zuccarelli is a Reference and Adult Services Librarian at the Cherry Hill Public Library in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. She helps to manage the library's social media accounts, including Instagram. My name is Crystal Schimpf, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Assisting us with chat and Twitter, we have Jenny Meese and Becky Wiegand from the TechSoup team. We'll be on Twitter using the at TechSoup for Libs handle and the hashtag TS4LIBS. We will have time for questions throughout the webinar, so please send us your questions using the chat as they arise, and we will address as many as we're able to. If you ask questions that we're not able to answer during the webinar, we will follow up later via email with a response. This webinar is being recorded, and all of the slides, resources, and materials will be included in the archive of the webinar, which you should receive in 24 to 48 hours. Now in just a moment, we'll hear from Amanda and Ray about their experiences and good practices. Before they begin, I wanted to share just a few resources and let you know again that all of these resources we share today will be included in the archive, so you don't have to write them all down right now. Now if Instagram is a new social media tool for you or your library, then you might want to start off with some basics once today's webinar is over. And I've included some resources here to help you get started. For one, the Instagram Help Center. Or you might want to take a free course like the one offered at GCF Learn Free. 
If your library already pays for a subscription to lynda.com, there is a course there as well that you might be interested in. I'll also share some articles uh, that highlight some of the great things libraries are doing on Instagram, and I'll share that link to the Storymakers resources at TechSoup, which Becky's also just shared in the chat. Now one more thing before we begin is we'd like to know a little bit about you. So tell us, does your library have an Instagram account already? Uh, you can select your response by clicking the radio button, and then click Submit to see the responses uh, of everybody coming in. Now I will also say that if you have an Instagram account and you'd like to share it, you can include that in the chat now. It will come to us, and I will compile all of those Instagram accounts later on and include them in the archive. Uh, and that way we can follow each other's library Instagram accounts to get ideas uh, in the future. So yeah, I can see those coming in now. We will collect all of these um, and put them together in, an archive, um, in the archive uh, so you can see them all later on. So thank you for sending those in. All right, so I can see it looks like most people have responded to this question, and it looks like we have a little more than half do have an Instagram account, so maybe you're here today to learn new ideas for how to use it. It looks like close to 40% don't yet have an Instagram account, so you're maybe getting ideas on how to get started today. And I know some, for some of us we might not be sure. Maybe the library has an Instagram account, but you're not aware of it, so that's completely okay as well. All right, so thanks for sending in your accounts. You can continue to send those in. But I'm going to go ahead and close this poll now since it looks like most everyone has responded. And we'll move on. We have one more poll that we'd like to share with you as well. So we also wanted to know what you hope to achieve through your library's Instagram account. And this might be for the account you currently have or the one that you hope to open after this webinar is over. Um, so you can check as many of these responses as apply to your situation. And once you've selected them, click Submit, and you'll be able to see everybody's responses. So we'll see what the most popular responses are here. And of course our guest today will be telling us some of the reasons they have uh, created an Instagram account and what they hope to achieve there. I'll give you a few moments. I know it takes a moment to look through these. You know, there, some of these uh, uh, options relate to the way you might connect with your library users or share library information. Maybe you're looking to attract new library users. And some of these are more general, just promoting books and reading, promoting libraries in general, or connecting with community organizations and other libraries. Uh, we can definitely see some of these rising to the top. If you have other, uh, of course, yeah, you can type that in the chat. I see one response just came in just to get more teens involved with your library or to improve higher participation in your programs. Those are great uh, reasons as well. Um, so I'll give just another few seconds here on this poll and give you a chance to submit your responses. And I'll close it down and take a look at the summary in 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. We got a few last responses in here right at the end. Um, so taking a look at these, we can see that definitely promoting library services and programs, connecting with library users, and attracting new library users are the top three responses. And we also got almost 75% for staying current and relevant, which is definitely something I think in, in the library community will want to do is stay current with technology and uh, social media practices. So uh, thank you for sharing your responses there. Um, so, so it's great to see all of the interest today. And the last thing I'll say before uh, handing things over to Amanda is that I just hope wherever you're at with Instagram in your library that you walk away with a few new ideas today to apply uh, to your library's Instagram account. But now I am going to hand things over to Amanda so she can tell us about what they've been doing at the Cherry Hill Public Library. Amanda? Hi, everyone. Um, so I wanted to start off and give you guys a little bit of information about Cherry Hill. Um, we are a standalone library, and we serve a very large community. Our population is about 70,000, and we are located about 20 minutes away from Philadelphia. Um, first, thing I want to share with you guys is how our library uses Instagram. And what we first did was set up a list of goals. Um, our goals are important because 
that gives us a blueprint for what we should be posting. So if you are looking to start an Instagram account, it might be a good place to, to start to get an idea of what you, the kind of things you want to post. Um, from those goals, our library has made a list of tasks and our library also has a social media committee. So it's not just me. It's a team. And we focus on these six tasks, but we're not limited to these six tasks. Uh, it's just a general representation of, of what we'd like to post. Uh, one to two team members focuses on each of these tasks. And I will give more examples um, of these tasks in a couple slides. So I see some people are asking what these mean, and I'm going to show them in a minute. So there are eight people on the social media committee. And a way we manage it is by using a document through a Google Drive. This is an example of the month of April, how we set up our tasks. And um, one of the team members creates the document. She gives us ideas and notes and then we can put in whatever it is that we'd like to post if we have any ideas. So this is an example of Bookface, which most people should be familiar with. Um, if you are using Instagram or know about Instagram and libraries. It's a popular trend on Instagram and very popular, popular with libraries. So when we post book face pictures, I feel that it not only represents um, the fun Instagram trend, but it's also a way to celebrate libraries in general. So this is an example of DVDs and TV shows. We just took a picture of six DVDs that all recently came in. Uh, we actually just posted this picture the other day. And it's just a way to let our followers and patrons know these new releases just arrived. Like, Come check them out. So it's a way to promote our services, and our programs. So this is our uh, Junior Chef program, which is very popular. This is a photo. Um, our Youth Services Department two members of the social media committee is on the, on the committee. And um, they do all the posts for all the youth services events. So they try to, they try to represent all of our goals with their posts. Um, and I think they do a pretty good job. This is 
a picture of some end pages. And I find that the end pages and book covers make fantastic uh, pictures. You know, there's a lot of beautiful book covers out there, and just taking book cover like pictures of book covers is a great thing to have on your Instagram account. Let's move on to the next picture. Um, these are pictures that we posted for upcoming events that we're having at our library. And the cosplay logo actually was created by one of our part-time employees that posts these type of pictures. Um, it's, a, it's a good way to let your patrons know about programs and even people who possibly aren't patrons but live nearby um, when you post your events. And this is a great picture. I love this picture. It's actually one of our team members' cats. And it's a great representation of pop culture and Instagram trends. So we have the hashtag Cats of Instagram and Catterday because it was taken on a Saturday. Um, so these are, these are things that we like to post we like to have fun and not have everything be about the library. Um, we like to represent things that other people want to see. And um, I guess we just want to have like pleasing pictures. So this is a it's an adorable picture. <laughs> So now I want to move on to the quality of pictures that you want to show and we want to show on Instagram. Um, this is actually one of our photos. I'm not sure who took it or who posted it, but it's not a great photo. Um, it's blurry and it's just not a great photo. Um, you know, our director is the person on the right-hand side, and she's a little bit cut off. Um, but I do have an example of what you should be doing. So I borrowed this picture from Burlingame, and this is a do. So this is a way to maybe do a blurry picture, but it's blurry on purpose, um, the bottom part there. And I think it's a great representation of what you should be doing. Um, but don't do what we did and post a picture like the one on the right. Okay, and so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about Bookface. Um, Bookface Friday, like I said, is very popular. And just some tips are it's okay if your hands and fingers show. Uh, the Joker picture on top is one of our pictures. And I think that picture was most, mostly a huge success because we have an employee who has green hair. And when he dyed his hair green, 
I immediately thought of the Joker and said, we have to get a picture, a book face picture with him. Um, and the Danielle Steele picture is amazing. It's, it's one of my favorite Burling game pictures. Um, again, I used an example. They have some really great uh, book face pictures. So take a look and, and you know, learn from them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you, it's okay if your fingers show. And I find that if you can line up at least one line, it helps to make the, the picture work for the book face. And as you can see with the Danielle Steele picture, they don't always need to be faces. And sometimes you're going to need props. So sometimes these things work quickly, but sometimes you need to gather some stuff to make the book face work. These are editing apps that I use on my phone. Um, they're apps that I feel most people can use. The, the novice can use these apps, and they will help them get better, better photos for Instagram. Um, and you know, so list of the apps and what they do. Each of them does something a little slightly different. And we don't use all of them all the time, but every once in a while you want a video or you want to add music. Um, so they are they're apps that anybody can use and they're all free to download. We try for promotion of our posts, we try to use as many hashtags as possible. We like to tag the author if we use a picture of their book. Um, in this one, we also tagged Fun Home the Musical, and they ended up liking our posts. So it's, it's always great to get recognition from either the author or someone who is involved with the book, if it's a graphic novel, you know, the, the illustrator maybe. Um, but we always try to promote the book using the author. Um, or the celebrity, the celebrity writes a book, and we, we use a picture of that. Um, for prom promotion, we also follow and support other libraries. And a great way to find libraries is just to search the Bookface Friday hashtag. Most libraries are doing Bookface pictures, and you can just search through and find great pictures and, and find great libraries that way. Um, this last slide is a trend that I've noticed on Instagram. Um, it is the Book Bento Instagram. There's actually an account called Book bento, and if you don't know what a bento is, it's a traditional Japanese box for lunch. Um, the picture is in the center of the bento, and I'm just I've just noticed that there's a trend of setting these pictures up in like a stylish and very um, particular manner um, that looks very nice. It's all coordinated and pleasing and 
the bottom three, the, the one on the far right, and left are Burling Games pictures, and the one in the center, the Lead a Ford picture, is ours. Um, the top two came from at Book Bento. Bento. Um, so it's, it's a good thing to look for, and I think it's kind of like a fun new trend if you're interested in posting anything like that. And that's about all I have for today. So we'll right. get to the questions. Yeah, Amanda. So thank you for sharing some of these great ideas. Now I think whether you already have an Instagram account for your library, for those of you listening, or you're starting this for the first time, this was a really nice outline of some of the different things you can do and the different types of things you can highlight that both promote your library and books and reading and all of those different uh, causes and relating back to the goals, Amanda, that you shared with us at the beginning. So I think this is a really nice kind of overview of what the possibilities are. Um, and uh, we've gotten, Amanda, we've gotten a lot of questions already. And I know at this moment we have time to answer a few. We'll get to as many as we can right now. And then uh, I'll invite everyone listening to continue to send uh, questions in because we'll have more time at the end. Um, but just a, a couple of uh, questions um, uh, for you, Amanda. Uh, now it looked like when we saw the schedule and that management uh, organization sheet that you had that it seemed to be about one post per day. And so we have a couple of questions around that. First of all, is that kind of your target to do you know, one post a, w a day, or how many do you try to post per day or per week? And is there, do you know of any general recommendations for what's too much or, or too little um, in terms of number of posts? Um, we tend to do one a day, but we don't always do one every day. So we'll maybe do like five to six a week. But it all also depends on the week. So we try not to do too many if, if we say we're going to post one and something else happens. Um, like last Thursday, I think we had a scheduled post, but then we, post some, we posted something about prints instead. Um, so if it can be posted later or at another time, we wait. But if we do do two posts a day, we try to do one in the morning and one in the afternoon, and then maybe we'll do less during the week. So maybe that week we'll only do like four or five. Um, but I think typically we, we do anywhere between four to six posts in a week. Um, I know with in Instagram is, is changing. I think they're going to have an algorithm. And I'm not exactly sure how that's going to affect what people see. So I think we're trying to feel it out and see <laughs> what's too much and what's not enough. Great, great. Um, and I think we have time for just one more uh, question right now, which is, um, I, and I think this is a really good question that was asked um, about posting pictures of patrons. And especially, the, I think this came up at the moment when you had the youth services slide up and you had the pictures of the, the kids up there as well. So how does your library handle permission for posting patron photos um, do you have a permission form, or um, do you just ask for verbal permission? What do you do? They mostly do verbal per permission. Um, I did find out from one of our children's librarians that some of her regulars, she's just aware of whether or not you know they've already either signed the sheet or um, because we, we do have a photo release 
um, sheet. But I think she is aware of who has signed that at this point. And she said if she's not sure, she will do a quick um, you know, verbal agreement. She also said that some of her patrons that come to these programs, she knows that they have Instagram accounts. Like even some of the kids and teens, they have their own Instagram account. And they, so they're like, oh, take a picture of me, you know, and they want it. So if they tell her that they want to be in the picture, then she will just go ahead and take the picture of them. Um, also, she said she likes to do some pictures in a way that may, I think in, in, in those pictures there is an example of it, you can't quite see the entire face of the child. Um, so she says she tends to do a lot of that as well when she is unsure whether or not that, that particular person has signed the release or if they would be uncomfortable with being posted. All right. Well, thank you for sharing the way that you have handled that situation in your library. And it sounds like there's a couple different ways that you've been addressing it. Um, and that you know your patrons pretty well uh, as, far, as far as regular patrons go. So, um, so we have a, a quite a few more questions, uh, but I, I want to move on so we get to hear Ray's presentation as well. So Amanda, I'll say thank you right now. We'll bring you back on later for more questions, okay? Okay. All right. And uh, those of you who have asked questions know that we will continue to respond to those later on, and we'll also follow up via email if any of those we, we aren't able to get to them during our uh, live webinar today. But now I'd like to turn over the controls to Ray so that he can share some of the good practices uh, from the Burlingame Public, Public Library's Instagram account. So Ray? Hello everybody. I just want to say thank you for spending the time on joining us um, in this webinar. My name is Ray Delar and I work for the Burlingame Public Library. Um, we're a small library in the Bay Area. We serve a population of 37,000 people, and we have about a staff of um, 63 people. And we also have a small branch called the Eastern Branch Library. Um, I want to start first with some quick pointers about getting started with an Instagram account. First, you want to pick a clear and concise username. You also want to create a strong description for your account and our description is listed there on the screenshot. Books, places, people, and things, the stuff we love. Um, another part of your profile will be a link. Um, and we typically like to rotate out our links. Sometimes it's our link to our Facebook page. Sometimes it's a link to our library website. Sometimes it's links to, um, for example, this webinar was up there for people to register. And in the screenshot, we have a link to one of our cool new projects that my coworker is um, doing. It's a podcast project um, called Me, You, We. And of course, when you start your account, you want to have a game plan. And uh, when we first started our account, it was simply our goal was to increase our presence on social media. And after running the account for almost two years now, we kind of fine-tune um, our approach. But having these questions addressed when we first started would have helped us out very much in the beginning. And that is the, the, to a answer these questions. Who is your intended audience? Are you going to reach out to the patrons that already use your library? Are you trying to reach out to those patrons or to those people who may not yet be your patrons? Or are you just sh sharing the fun things about your library with other libraries on social media? Next question is, what kind of content do you plan to share? Are you going to share pictures of events? Are you going to share new additions to your various collections? Are you going to share video? Um, I'm going to go a little bit more into content creation a little, a little bit later in the presentation. And finally, the question is, um, how do you manage your account? I know Amanda mentioned that, she, that Cherry Hill has a social media team, and we also have a social media, media team here at the Burlingame Library. Um, we run ours a little bit differently. We have people designated for each social media outlet. I'm in charge of Instagram. We have other people in charge of our Twitter accounts. Um, 
of our Facebook account, YouTube channel, and also our Pinterest account. And we meet once a month to kind of coordinate our efforts. And um, we actually started doing an editorial calendar so we could all kind of know what everybody's posting so we kind of avoid reposting the same, same thing. So what do you do when you have this new cool account on Instagram? Well, you've got to market it. And um, this is some of the ways that we marketed our account when we first started. We announced the account on email newsletters, all of our program flyers, our website. We made social media bookmarks that we put in people's holds. When they picked them up, they had these social media bookmarks. We left them on all the desks. We passed them out at author events. Um, and we put all of our social media badges on our email signatures, too. Of course, we used all of our other social media accounts to announce that we were starting an Instagram. And we also, in the very beginning, linked most of our IG posts to Facebook. So then we would be posting on both outlets at the same time. And there's also that level of just word of mouth. We told our friends, we told our family, we told our coworkers to follow, and of course we followed other libraries. And um, Amanda mentioned searching the book page Friday tag to find other libraries. Um, another w tip that we used when we were trying to find other libraries is we just looked at what other library looked at what other libraries who other libraries were following, and you could simply just click on somebody's followers count and it will list everybody that they follow. And more often than not, it's a whole bunch of other libraries as well. So that's another good way to find other libraries on Instagram. And of course, a big um, priority for us here in Burlingame now is to engage our community and to tell them you know, that we have this account and we're using this account to share the events and the special moments that happen within our library. And the way to do that is search hashtags and start your own hashtag campaigns. And of course, to get out of the library, get into the community, um, post pictures outside of the library, um, basically getting outside of the walls to, to really find people. This next slide has a couple of screenshots here. And this is, these all relate to um, searching the hashtags on Instagram. And Instagram now, you weren't able to search hashtags through their web-based um, version, but now you can, so it's pretty cool. So that first one is just our location, and I just looked that up and I took a screenshot, and it shows the pictures that people have posted. Um, actually, none of these pictures are actually ours. These are all from our patrons, and they just used the Burlingame Library location when they posted their account. And then I went in there, and I liked it, and I commented. And those likes in the comments, you know, people see and then they know that you know, the library has an account. So it's a great way to reach out to those people who are using Instagram and using Instagram right in your library. Um, I also searched the hashtag, just Berlin Game Library. <coughs> Most of those pictures now are from us. But um, when, I first, when we first started the account, most of those pictures were from users that you know, didn't even know that we had an account. Or, but basically, I just went back and I liked all those pictures. And then again, those people then, some of them followed us. And then I just searched the hashtag Burlingame as well. And a lot of pictures show up. And it's also a good tool for you starting an Instagram account is that when you look at your location hashtag, you kind of see the places where the community is and what they're posting. And you could also post and go to those same places and take photos and also like all them and comment. And then also search the popular areas in your city. Um, that last screenshot is the Burlingame Avenue um, hashtag. And again, it's a good way to um, engage your community. Um, I mentioned something about creating your own hashtags to engage. And this is an example of one that we did. Um, two Halloweens ago, we had a theme of Berlin Game of Thrones, and we actually built a uh, throne out of books, and we placed it out in the lobby with a sign saying, take a picture sitting on the throne of books and tag us on Instagram, and you know, use the hashtag Berlin Game of Thrones. And this was really a way 
for us to find out who in our community and who of our patrons are actually on Instagram. And to our surprise, you know, people started posting and, you know, the bottom three photos aren't our photos at all. Those are from patrons. And it's just a good tool that um, helps us really see that there are people out using our library and who are on Instagram at the same time. Um, another create your own hashtag um, campaign was uh, last summer we did a called um, the 100 day project and actually it was a, just a overall Instagram challenge um, meant for people to post something creative whether it was a drawing or a video for 100 days straight and make that commitment and we <laughs> Put a, we, we attempted it. We actually went, got through all 100 days. And it was, our spin though was that for each post, we would post something that had to do about the, the city of Burlingame. So it was a great, great way to, to reach out to those people to, to find our account as an informative avenue about their own city. And it was another great way to um, connect with local businesses, um, connect with the Burlington Historical Society and other community organizations. Um, again, another great way to build staff support um, for the account because, you know, 100 pictures for 100 days straight is a lot to handle for just one person. So I sent a call out to all my coworkers and my staff to see if, you know, they had anything interesting that I should highlight during this project or if they could take pictures, if they had any ideas. And we really just pulled all these pictures together and we got this project done. We got a lot of great feedback from our community as well. Uh, Amanda talked about hashtags. I'm going to go into some of the hashtags just real briefly. You want to participate in library hashtag campaigns um, and Instagram challenges. And I'll go into what more specific about that later. And there's a list of some hashtags up here that I tend to use on most of our po posts. Um, again, the hashtags, I think, are important. Um, you don't want to go overboard, but you know we are putting this content out to be shared. And when you add another hashtag, it's putting your picture in a pool of of photos that you never know if you'll you know gain somebody's interest. So I always think that it's a great idea to to use hashtags for your your images. Um, an example of a great library hashtag is Bookface Friday. And 13. 1,000, almost 14,000 posts. Um, it's been pretty amazing. Libraries all over the world are participating, and it simply takes you know a book and a staff member willing to pose. Um, but it's a great way to get your name out if you're just starting, or to create content if you already have a, an account. This is a great example of um, a library using a hashtag and putting a library spin on it. Um, the Bernardsville Public Library created this library hashtag. It's called Library in My Hand. And it's a very captivating image. It shows somebody holding their phone, but having some sort of library service displayed on there. And it was a great way to promote the remote services that are available to patrons um, when they're not even in the library. And libraries all over again joined in and participated. And it was a great example, and I wanted to highlight this example during this presentation of a way that you know we libraries have been using Instagram to promote services, um, not even just services that happen inside the building, but from home, just simply through your device. So I talked a little bit about reaching out to your local community, um, but also. There's a second part to it is that there's this community on Instagram. And from my experience, what I kind of did is I just dived right into it. I followed all the library accounts. Um, I liked a lot of pictures, commented. And also, I followed Instagram's actual accounts. And by doing so, Instagram um, you know, will, will post images, that you know you kind of want to replicate their their beautiful photos, but on on top of that, what they'll also do is they'll highlight other accounts, and 
looking at other people's accounts also has provided an inspiration towards for me um, to also get ideas of what to post for the library, putting the library spin on things. So highly suggest to follow Instagram. And if you have the chance to, to connect with other Instagrammers. We were lucky to be um, invited not too long ago, a couple weekends ago, to San Francisco Public Library for an Insta Meet, where we got to meet other Instagrammers. And um, we got a special tour of the main library down there, behind, behind the scenes before the library opened. And it was a great event. And so I encourage, if you have the opportunity to host an Insta Meet at your library or attend one, do so. It, it was an awesome event. And, and the, I was very honored to have been invited. And collaborate with your fellow libraries on Instagram. Um, we're all in this together. We're all showing, trying to show that libraries are changing today and we're, we're developing new ways and we're accepting new ways of reaching our community and just being on Instagram is, is a testament to that. So work together with other libraries on Instagram. Um, last year, we did the library donut shelfie where I reached out to the libraries on Instagram to send me donut shelfies. And um, it's kind of hard to explain with text that's on our YouTube channel, but we had about 18 libraries submit to us these donut selfies, and then it created this one big selfie, and it got everyone involved, and it was a fun project. So collaborate. Reach out to your fellow libraries in your system or just in general and work on projects together. Now a little bit on content creation. All you really need is your, your smartphone. Um, here's a little image of what we have so far in terms of, of what we use, a camera, GoPro, some tripod. And when it gets heavy, then we definitely use a laptop to do some for, for further editing. Um, Ray, in fact, this, yes. is, this is Crystal. I'm just going to jump in here. We're almost out of time, and what I might suggest is if we jump ahead, because you've got, and we'll let everybody know all these slides will be available about okay. the content creation. And the, I know you've got some slides in here that talk about the uh, video and stop motion video and some great tips in there. But I think it might be good if we jump ahead to hearing about some of your challenges and successes, maybe just a little bit on okay. the analytics if you want to jump there. Um, and then that way we have time for a few more questions before we wrap up. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so let's just jump to the, the challenges. and. Um, one thing that helped us out is that the city developed a social media policy, and that applied to content that we created and also the comments and um, followers and who to follow. So double check with your city or your library to find out if you have a social media um, policy, and that will help you out in launching your account. Again, getting the word out to your community, and I touched base on some of the things that we did. And of course, keeping content fresh. Um, you don't want to overload all your social media outlets with the same thing. So it does take some coordination between your team. And um, you know, finding the time to just make the, the content and managing the accounts um, has been a, a challenge. But even with all these challenges, um, there has been some success with our account. And just real brief, um, we were lucky to be on the list of the top 10 best related books, um, best book related Instagram accounts. We were also featured last year in the New York Times for um, some of our book faces. And we were also recognized at ALA for our book faces as a way to promote collections. And I mentioned participating in Instagram challenges. Um, last Halloween, we were selected as a winner for Instagram's weekend hashtag project. And it was a, a very exciting thing to have been featured by Instagram um, themselves. So just some takeaway points and uh, just dive into the Instagram community. Comment, follow, and like other library photos, um, even other Instagrammers, people in your community. Really, really get involved. Be passionate. Um, you know, although I manage the account, I, the account would not be here if it was not for my coworkers and their willingness to pose for a book face or their willingness to help out with shooting a video. So definitely you want to utilize your, your coworkers and your library. And of course, have fun because it will translate into your account. And people will see it, and hopefully they will stay followers. Um, and that's pretty much it. 
All right. Um, and Ray, I know you've got these links here, and these we are including in the archive. There's some really great ideas here, and also um, some some conversation about video on Instagram from the Instagram help files. So we'll include those in the archive as well. And uh, just to reiterate, we do have all of the slides, and there are some really great tips included. So I encourage you to go back through those. But we want to take just a few more minutes for some of the questions that have been coming in, especially as they pertain to what you've been sharing so far. And Ray, I know you talked a little bit more about the hashtags. And we've had quite a few questions about how to use the hashtags. And one was, do you have any advice on getting people to participate in the library hashtags? I know you had a few examples you shared, but was there anything specific you did to promote the hashtag itself, or did it just kind of catch on? Well, with the Berlin Game of Thrones example, we simply just left a sign there right next to the, the throne of books to kind of inform people that you know we are on social media and to use the hashtag. Um, we have been doing these little projects like that scavenger hunt, and um, you know, and then it shows some of those photos. And we, whenever we do programs or something like that, we'd like to try to create a uh, our own specific hashtag so then people who participate can search it and find it as well. Great. And uh, another question came in: Is there such thing as too many hashtags. I know sometimes we see people use many, many hashtags. So do you have a certain number that you shoot for when you're creating a post or what, a point where you think it might be too many for a library account? Um, I think, you know, I mean, there's a point where it, it could be way too many hashtags. But I think for us, we tend to use always kind of the same ones. Right now we're using like a set of maybe five or six that are applied to each post. Um, libraries Transform, Libraries of Instagram, Library Life, Library, and then Burling Game, and then Burling Game Library. And those are kind of our consistent hashtags. And then, of course, the other ones that we add on are dependent on what we're posting. Right, right. Um, and then, uh, do you have any um, tips for identifying pop culture trends that you might tack on to or things in your community? How do you go about finding those or um, discovering um, them? Again, a lot of it is. You know, following other community organizations on Instagram, and also searching the local hashtags, because, um, and also the Explore page on Instagram is a good way to find just general pop culture trends. Because just like Twitter, they'll they'll highlight the the hashtags that are trending, so to speak. So the Explore page is a great place to to find those kind of trends. All right. Um. So we did have uh, some questions kind of in between your presentation and Amanda. So Amanda, I'll have you um, come on now and, and maybe answer this one as well. And one that I think is really important for us to com consider in public libraries especially is dealing with inappropriate comments. So I'd like to ask each of you, um, uh, Amanda, I'll have you go first on this one. Have you had any inappropriate comments come in, and how have you handled those in your library? Um, you know, whether it was somebody who was just being negative or seemed to be kind of a, a spammer or an Instagram like trolling type of person. <laughs> Have you handled that? Um, I don't think we've actually had a problem with that on Instagram. Um, we have had a couple problems on Facebook. Um, when they came in, they were handled pretty much directly by our director, and she addressed it, answered their question, and then blocked them okay. um, so that they could not post anything else negative right. when it, it came to the point where it was just obvious that they were just being negative to be negative. Right. And it sounds like you got second opinion from administration or manager, so that's always good to do. Uh, Ray, what about on your end? Have you had any issues with inappropriate comments? Um, no, you know, yes, we have, and it, that's why you know on the challenges I, I wrote down that social media policy. So the city and the library has adopted a new social media policy, and that applies to comments. So um, off the top of my head, I don't know the, the exact wording, and the, but basically, you know, if it's a dig at a coworker or just inappropriate, we delete it just straight out. Um, and you know, if it continues to happen, then we block the user. All right. 
And uh, I know one of the people who had asked that question said that they had very strict policies for not deleting comments. So maybe that's where taking a look at updating policies, especially around social media, might be something to consider in your library if that's an issue that you're facing. Um, and so that is a, a good thing to consider. Um, well, we're, we're just about out of time. Um, and I suppose that um, what I want to just reiterate for everybody who has questions we haven't responded to. I know we had a lot of very technical questions and also some uh, that we just simply didn't have time for. We will get back to you all via email with those. Um, and also again, we'll have all of those resources and links available to you. Um, I, I um, did just want to end with one last question for each of you though. And this came early on. And uh, I know you've shared a lot of different examples of what types of content um, you are sharing. But what are you um, finding gets the most uh, uh, engagement from your, your users, uh, uh, from your, your followers, the most shares, the most followers, um, and the most views. Um, so Amanda, again, I'll have you go first. What, what seems to be the, the biggest success for you guys with your Instagram? Um, I'm, I'm actually not sure. I feel like it, it varies. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times it's just what happens to be the best picture. Um, and I, it also it might also depend on what time we we post it. I think okay. that it it really depends. I don't think there's a one set thing for us that mm -hmm. gets better better I know um, likes. Yeah, and I know you talked a lot about the quality photos, so that definitely seems to be an emphasis for you and something that's working well at Cherry Hill. Uh, Ray, what about you? What seems to be the most popular content out there for your Instagram account? Um, I would say, of course, number one is, is the Book Base Friday post for sure. Um, Great. I think it's just such a wildly popular hashtag that not only are people seeing it in their feeds, but people are just clicking on the hashtag, they might not even be following us and, and they see our photos. Um, so the popularity of that hashtag is just has led those kind of posts to be the most popular on our account. Um, second to that I would think would be, you know, some of the stop motion videos that we do to either promote events um, or to highlight new books. And other than that, you know, pictures of our community, I think are probably the next highest on that. And that's a goal that we have going forward is to kind of share more pictures of the people that um, come into the library. All right. Great. Well, and I agree, those Book Face Fridays sure are fun and get people's attention. So, um, so that sounds like maybe a good place to start. If you're not doing that or if your library is starting with Instagram, that could be a really great uh, avenue for you to start on. So, um, so Amanda and Ray, thank you so much for sharing. We will get back to you with those unanswered questions via email, and we'll be sending out that archive later on this week. Please do stay on the line. Uh, I have just a few announcements that you might be interested in, and we'll ask you to take a brief survey at the very end. But I just wanted to remind you again about that Storymakers 2016 campaign and the prizes that you can win there. Uh, submissions can be uh, sent in through May 31st. And there are a few webinars still coming up on polishing your digital story and using photos specifically to tell your story. So you might be interested there. Uh, also, we have a few upcoming library webinars, uh, one on outcome measurement for small libraries next Wednesday, May 4th, and one on May 18th on teaching digital skills to older adults um, in, in libraries. Uh, so that's all that we have for you today. I just want to thank ReadyTalk for being our sponsor. And thanks again to Ray and Amanda for sharing their Instagram expertise. And thank you to you for joining us. So have a great afternoon everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.